Taking the <coughs> concept of multinationals a little bit further, um, it's fair to say that, that basically crime follows money, leverages money. Yes. Um, you can see that if, if cryptocurrency becomes that, any thoughts on how you might perceive the criminal element will start to leverage this? Um, well, w one thing that's uh, interesting about criminal organizations is that they are um, early adopters of technology. <laughs> they are, because they operate at the nexus of highest risk and highest reward, which makes them seek competitive advantage at a much higher rate than any other organization. So, Criminal organizations can take best advantage of technology and, as early adopters, use it to their advantage. Telephones, cars, shoes, I'm sure, <laughs> were all exploited first by criminals. <laughs> because if the police doesn't have shoes, and you do, you can run away. <laughs> <laughs> Automobiles is just the next step in that glorious plan. Bitcoin is money. And by definition, money is something you can use to buy anything. If you can't use it to buy anything, it's not money. It's a voucher, it's a loyalty card, it's a gift card, but it's not really money. If it comes with restrictions on how you can use it, it's not money. It's lost the fundamental principle of medium of exchange. So can you buy drugs with Bitcoin? Of course you can. Otherwise, it wouldn't be money. Now, I could place a bet for you that it would be a lot easier to buy drugs with New Zealand dollars <laughs> than it is with Bitcoin. But you're right, criminals will use money. What we need to understand is that the tool is not the crime. The tool has never been the crime. And societies that try to banish the use of hammers, because hammers can be used to hit someone over the head, or build a Habitat for Humanity home, are going down the wrong path. The truth is that, as human beings, 99.9% .9 of us are going to use money to feed our children, to give them health care, sanitation, and education, to give them a better future. That's what human beings do with money. Just like what we use the internet to do is store the world's largest repository of cat videos. <laughs> yes, sure, there's some porn there. <laughs> but in the end, the benefit of technology far outweighs the risks. I'm not concerned with solving crime through the control of money. When you try to solve crime through the control of money, the very organization you give control of money to becomes the criminal. Then they become the greatest criminal, and then they use that money to commit genocide. Every time in history, the power of money is absolute. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. We need to start thinking about separation of money and state, and understand that it is just as important as separation of church and state. Money in the control of single governments. Maybe in New Zealand it works well. Great, you have one of the 5% benevolent governments in the world. The rest are not like that. The rest abuse the power of money to punish their political opponents. They use the bank controls not to stop criminals, but to stop their political opposition. Just ask Putin. It's part of his playbook. When you give control over money in order to fight crime, the person you give control to is the crime, the greatest crime.